Hi students, Professor Matt here. Today's brief lecture is on feminist criticism. Feminist criticism focuses on human identity as a critical framework. One critic described feminist criticism as reading as a woman. Feminists focus on issues of gender, so these are social roles that are performed by the sexes, and explore ways in which women have been denied social power and rights to various forms of expression throughout human history. Feminist criticism is closely related to issues of socioeconomic class and race. And of course, socioeconomic class involves Marxist criticism, and we can also combine feminist criticism with issues of race and ethnicity, as well as post-structuralism. As feminist criticism begins with the critique of patriarchy, which is the way in which men have dominated society throughout human history. There are also two different general camps of feminism, egalitarianism and essentialism. An egalitarianist will look at ways in which we can make women equal with men in society. So we can have better representation of women in the political system, in the business system, in the religious systems. Um, we can close the gender wage gap. And so it looks at bringing women into the franchises that e exist in society. Essentialism looks at generalizing um, unique feminine qualities. So we might look to things like emotion, cooperation, nurturing, as opposed to competition, dominance, and logic as more male virtues. We can trace uh, different phases of feminist criticism. The first in the 1960s at the time of the sexual revolution, which focused on men's treatment of women in fiction. And as women looked back through the history, looked through the canon of literature, the conclusion they came to was that the canon consists of predominantly male sexist novelists. The second phase comes in the late 1960s and the 1970s and focuses on the place of women as writers in the literary history and trying to reconstruct this history to account for a female tradition. The three phases that we can chart to the, fe the woman's novel are the first phase of women trying to write as men. So oftentimes women had to assume a male pen name to get published or they were trying to write um, to meet the, the demands in the market of the industry that patriarchy had established. The second wave comes, comes in the form of polemics, which would be a form of argumentation. One critic lovingly described this as castration novels, which uh, implies a, a hint or maybe more than a hint of anger that's directed at the demands of patriarchy. The third wave consists of genuine feminine novels, a, a female novel that takes for granted the authenticity and legitimacy of women's point of view without the hostility of the castration novels. By 1980, feminist criticism had reached a point of identity crisis. Namely, how is it that we can define a real female novel? Because if we give men science, if men keep science and reason and logic, does that mean that women have to embrace unreasonableness, illogic, etc.? Of course, that doesn't seem like a very satisfying answer. Um, and it's a very structuralist way of looking at things as a sort of simple dichotomy. If we go, um, on the other hand, with a more essentialist approach and say, you know, we can generalize, there is this sort of standard differentiation between men and women, where men have reason, women have intuition, men have logic, women have emotion. Does that mean that men can't be intuitive or emotional? And conversely, that means women can't be reasonable and logical. And of course, that doesn't seem like a very satisfying answer as well. And so this might suggest yet a fourth phase to feminist criticism where we kind of move beyond these issues of gender and women can actually write from a point of view that doesn't mean that they have to speak for all women or that they have to write um, because they're a woman, they have to write a female novel, but they can just write something that intellectually or artistically motivates them and they can write from the point of view as a person. Some of the key principles of feminist criticism. One is that language, institutions, and social power structures have reflected patriarchal interests throughout history. And this has had a very profound impact on women's ability to express themselves and the quality of their daily lives. Because of women's reproductive capacity, patriarchy has naturalized their domestic role with the simple split of women staying in the home and men going out to work. Because of women's relatively smaller physical size, men have been able to dominate them physically throughout history. And in turn, they've used this physical domination to establish political, economic, and religious systems, which also help naturalize their power, maintain their dominance, 
by making women's inferior roles appear natural or designed. And so that's part of the ideology of, of patriarchy is that it's not that the systems have been constructed, but the system is natural. And we can point to religious texts or we can point to and haven't made great discoveries in science, so why should we trust them? Or, you know, there, there aren't women in business, so how can we trust that they have business acumen? And of course, if patriarchy has set up the institution to exclude women, then of course, how could they make contributions to these fields? It's only once the walls are torn down and women are led into the franchises that of course they can make contributions. Um, and that's part of the insidious nature of ideology is that it makes these things appear natural when in fact they're really social constructions. Principle one, continue women's experiences of selfhood have been affected by the power exerted over them through the system. And in general, traditionally women have been defined in terms of their beauty and usefulness to men. The second key principle, women have throughout history resisted and subverted patriarchal oppression in a variety of ways. So it's true that women have always been able to negotiate their own economic, psychological, and intellectual needs, even if that has been within the domestic sphere or within the family, more so than, say, in religious, political, or economic systems. Um, some voices of resistance have been documented, but of course, many more have been silenced, and so their history is incomplete. And as one feminist critic noted, even the word history is uh, charged with patriarchy right? His story. So uh, the feminine version of that would be her story. The third key principle, women can be empowered through representation in political, economic, and religious systems. So while on the one hand they have been disenfranchised, on the other hand we can bring them in and women can be empowered through these systems. Key principle fourth, essentialist feminists desire resistance to patriarchy that focuses on unique values of women. So again, recognizing that really we've constructed our society, you know, our economic system on the notion of competition, on domination, on, on logic, but these are our values that we've built into the system. So we could just as well build a system around cooperation, nurturing, and emotion. The fifth key principle is that feminism is a criticism that can be combined with others like Marxist race, ethnicity, or post-structuralist criticism. The Marxist critic would look at how women of the working class, middle class, or upper class might have different experiences and how there might be conflicts uh, within different social economic systems. Of course, we can also apply race, race ethnicity to this, and the post-structuralist is going to look at man and woman as a hierarchical binary that can be challenged. And one way to challenge that binary is to look at the ways in which gender is really simply a performance. Um, gender is an identity and it's something that's performed through um, wearing clothes, through certain gestures, through stylized interactions with the same or opposite sex. Ultimately these things might appear very natural to us and unchallengeable, but they are artificial and they are culturally constructed, which makes it necessary for us to repeat these interactions, these, uh, cl these clothing, these gestures, etc so that these differences between man and woman appear very natural uh, as opposed to socially constructed. So putting feminist criticism into practice. A very simple way that you can do this is start to pay attention to how women are depicted in literature. What are the opportunities that are available to them compared to those available to men? What values are represented that are gendered? So are there certain things that are considered male or female? and is there some sort of hierarchy involved in this. And of course we can look at the text itself or at the characters in the text and say is this an example of reinforcing the status quo or is this a challenge to the status quo? Fighting for women's rights, is it looking at the feminine qualities in an essentialist manner or is it naturalizing patriarchal ideas and values? So this is Professor Matt signing off until next time.